Linux OTC. Welcome to episode 27. I'm Bill. I'm Eric. He's Majid. <laughs> and he's Leo. <laughs> That was good. Well, I thought we were going all alphabetical. Oh, I'm sorry. Is L and M? When have we ever uh, uh, have L and M swap places in the you know he's, last? Leo's two weeks. always got to be last. No, I don't he's know. He's just making. He's just making the rules up now. <laughs> I know. And there's me having had a right witty comment to put at the end. Oh, did you really? Yeah. We can do it over again. Yeah, I can. Okay. Say, yeah, I can do that. You know. And hi, I'm Majid. I am. Uh, evaluating my life choices as we speak as here i am on a saturday evening where it is nice and sunny and i'm speaking to some people <laughs> who i struggle to cause gentlemen i'm worried that this might be used against you at some point <laughs> yeah i was just thinking Get that good with the editing <laughs> and then you can hold it as blackmail material <laughs> I don't think I'm going to release a video okay. version of this one. Okay, so so Leo, Bill, oh, what? Eric. He's already coming at me. We haven't even started the show yet. Bill, Leo, <laughs> and Eric, if you believe oh, okay. that this is some kind of smoking gun that will de- torpedo my crea- a career, let me introduce you to a cupboard and a PDF. Um, um, you can't see it from there. But, uh, you know, a PDF of five terabytes of complaints you're at the back of the queue <laughs> all right all right well i think you're safe then uh gosh i'm derailed now linux what do you think that's the wrong uh, thing see look if you're driving a truck on rails then you know there's a slight problem there william i mean i'm not an expert in these things but i'm just saying he called you William. What's your middle name so he can get that in there too? Well, that would be Curtis. William Curtis Hauser the third. William Curtis, get in here right now. That's the that's not a good name to have had at school, actually, is it? No, I got called things like Billiam and then Billiam's just cute. Wait in a boot minute. Boot camp, I was Doogie. I mean, I, so are you saying I can't call you Billiam? You can call me whatever you want. I Bill mean, Curtis I, is I, the guy that did unsolved mysteries. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm just. Oh, I love that guy. Uh, nice. I'm just wondering if there yeah. was a, a substitution of R's and M N's in Curtis. It was. It was just because. Well, yeah, I was adopted at birth, which I found <laughs> out when I was 45. Was it the fact that? Wow. Was it the fact that your uh, six foot that Michael Jordan finally you, you looked at Michael Jordan and thought, "Nah, you're not my dad." No, it was because he couldn't hit a three pointer to save his life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> No, they, they would have got away with it if not for my aunt. For, uh, for those pesky ants. Yeah. she, it, uh, Mom and dad both died with the secret. And then here comes my aunt. Wow. About six Probably couldn't after. wait to tell you like her a whole life. No, she just... couldn't uh, because there was some drama around the whole thing. The whole family uh, disagreed with them lying to me. And uh, I was kind of. Did you disagree with them lying to you? Uh, at this point, it's one of those things where I have to accept what has happened, if for no other reason than I want to live in peace, because there's yeah. nobody left alive to ask what yeah. what was you thinking? What did you right. did you assume that I would have if I'd known the truth that you know it would have affected our relationship you know you should have thought better of me you know so I I just try not to go to those dark places because it can get it can get out of hand real quick because yeah no I don't I don't like being lied to on that profound of a level and I was raised an only child and they knew how I I was I was terribly lonely as a kid growing up and here I had brothers and sisters um and I, I find out now that they also had an opportunity to adopt my sister, but they uh, didn't do it because they only wanted one kid. And I was kind of like, I was kind of kept in a glass box. Uh, and then when my, when the rest of the family, I guess we used to have family functions and campouts and stuff we'd go to. But when my grandparents complained about me being lied to, mom and dad stopped going to those. So it was, and so my aunt, 
I say I'd say it was about six months after Dad's funeral in 2018. Um, my aunt tells my wife that I got something to tell Bill, and it's going to change his life. And she had been keeping track of my birth mother's, my sister's, and my brother's Facebook pages hmm. all these years just to uh, give me something. And then she told her first, and then, my, of course, my wife, she gets emotional about these things. She watches all those crazy adoption shows on TV. Yeah. And uh, I, she told me, and I knew it. I, I knew something wasn't right because you've got... I used to make comments that when I was growing up that I must be adopted. And I remember now my mom turning white as a sheet. And it was all because they took mad pictures. My, my dad was a Polaroid uh, collector. He had mm -hmm. every single Polaroid camera ever made. Mm -hmm. And he was taking mad pictures all through the 60s, up, right up until 1972. And then here's this gap in 1972 until almost the end of the 70s when pictures picked up again and started showing up and there's no pictures of my mom pregnant or anything like that uh, um no pictures of like baby showers it just didn't exist and of course my mom had a great explanation for that uh she said she didn't let anybody take any pictures of her pregnant which you know that works that that sounded like something it's, my mom. It's not a lie. Yeah, it, yeah. It, that it, was probably the most and it would have been brilliant. Easier to do, easier to do back then as well. Yes, and it fit with her personality too because she was she was particular about how she was how she would allow people to take pictures of her. And so yeah, when when my aunt told me, I hit up my mom on Facebook, and and then that led to that led to uh, two more brothers and sisters from both sides of the birth mother and birth father and my brother he's 11 months older than i am and Man, parents were busy yeah yeah very busy those two were father never knew i existed um oh. passed away my birth mother's still alive and uh i know two of my sisters and my brother and then some of the cousins and all that um you know so it's one of those things where i can move forward and just accept the positive things about it and just kind of live with the fact that I'm never going to get the answers that I would have wanted out of the people that orchestrated this because it's actually an even bigger story uh, involving some high up people in the city where I was born covering this wow. up and making the uh, making the whole thing look as though my parents that raised me were my birth parents. The plot quite literally. Yeah. The, well, the, to make it long story short, the, f uh, my grandparents, friends from church were the, uh, sheriff of the County I live in and the superintendent of health and human services or whichever is the, uh, part of the government that handles birth certificates mm -hmm. because wow. nothing was recorded on computer in those days. These two people made it look as though they, they, they made the documents look as though the mom and dad that raised me were my birth parents. They put them down on the birth certificate as my birth parents. Hmm. That way the whole thing was there's a completely book. buried. There's a book. There's a book in this. I, I've often I, thought that there's there's the, gaps the in the information. Yeah because, yeah, because, yeah, because this is a little <coughs> bit of a miscarriage of justice, isn't it? Because you are lying. You know, it's they one. they probably thought at the time that they were doing the right thing because my mother at the time was she wasn't a junkie or anything, but she was in no way capable of raising children. The road and to this hell, all, the road to it, hell is paved with good intentions. Well, yeah, absolutely. But there was a church involved, you know, and there, the people in the church, the, the, the pastor, the one that orchestrated this whole thing, put all these people together and and oversaw it. And then that person told some lies along the way about, well, at one point in the 90s, my mom wanted to find me. And so she went. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. yeah, she she went looking for me, and then she was told by that by that pastor that she should probably leave it alone because my dad was a lawyer, and that I was I was a a, a judge advocate in the army, <laughs> and um and then at some point I think somebody from 
my mom and dad's side that raised me asked the question too and they were lied to and told that my birth mother was um a junkie prostitute and nobody knew where she was at so they were they were lying to both sides just to keep and i think that was because had the whole thing come out there'd be some heads rolling you know with the falsifications and, and stuff like yeah. that yeah, yeah yeah so all those people are dead now wow and, yeah. and they got away with it they got away with it i'm sorry yeah. to have started us off all off on something so morbid i was trying to make a cheap joke but Unfortunately, you all became very uh, Majid. Important. Majid, stop making cheap yeah. jokes. See where they your cheap jokes get us. Turn out bad. <laughs> this is how every cheap <laughs> joke turns out, just like this. And Ike furiously typing another email. Yes, <laughs> I think the time has come for me to rein in my humorous side. <laughs> no, you need uh, to crank it up. I love it. Oh, but yeah, but but it. yeah, Joe, uh, Bill, um, that was shit. So sorry for you, man. Yeah. Oh, it's it's fine. I know I know who I am now. You know that I'm in my fifties, of course. But it it it's taught me. What's it taught me? And what is the moral of the story? Well, because that's that's, 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 a that's tough the one. last chapter. That's the last chapter of the book. You have to have that. Before yeah, you that's write probably book, where so. that's probably where I'm going to get stuck. Because yeah. well, the the moral is people should not people should probably know who they are. But if nobody's going to tell you who you are, then you've got to figure that out on your own. And yeah. I hope that's what I've done. Um, oh, it could have ended up so much worse. Or, or you, you only got to like yourself a little bit. Yeah, and you win. Yeah. You know? Or you can say that, as somebody once told me, the, the reality of human existence is to be alone. And we seek company and we seek relationships. But unfortunately, we come in alone. And we leave alone. So the idea of being being alone isn't anything new. It's just what are the things you can pick up along the way to try and improve that. Do you mm-hmm. kind of get my meaning? Yep. Yeah. At the well end of said. the day, at the end of the day, unfortunately, unfortunately, we are alone. You know, people, parents will die, kids will die, people who you trust your entire life with will betray you. All of that shit is going to happen. You know, so if you accept that you are unfortunately an island, hopefully you'll be around other islands and other things that will improve your life. And if those islands aren't there, then you're yourself, aren't you? And you still got, you know, you can control what's in your brain, control what's in your brain. Be happy. Unless you got a chemical imbalance, in which case, well, good luck. I have, I have noticed though. I thought you were going to say, I have a chemical imbalance. I was like, no, not that too, Bill, not that too. (laughs) I've noticed that most people that feel alone, it it helps when you finally realize that you're you're not alone in a world of people that are connected, and you're the only one not connected. You're alone in a world full of other people that are alone, and... And they're just feeling it in different ways than you are, maybe. So, yeah. boy, you folks, you're getting some real value out of this episode today. Let yeah, me tell I mean, you, I, is this I, going I, out? <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I'm even going to put a uh, Plato mm-hmm. reference in, where Plato always said, "Be kind, for you never know what struggles lie within." Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I and I thought that's that is a if that isn't a, la- a maxim to live by, I don't know what is. It's a good one, I think. Like Joe wants to join us. Oh, oh, that would be good. Get some normality back, I suppose. We'll have to he redo depends. the audacity. He does. Two seconds. Let me just. Have we done the audacities? It's running. We did. Yeah, yes, yeah, we it's, did. Running. <laughs> it's running. Have we done the? It's running. I don't know. If no, we did. I need you. I need you to hurry up and come up with some ideas for uh, na- uh, episode names before the drugs wear off, Majid. <laughs> <laughs> That's just so, that's the episode. So I need you to start working on it right now. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I shall. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Give me two seconds. I need to get rid of this cable. Okay. All right. While well, everybody Please. figures it out, um, <laughs> what what's a good price for a twenty-seven inch four K monitor uh, that's as close to full sRGB color gamut? Does it have to be four K? I mean, it's got to be at least four K. Yeah. At least four K. Yes. I mean, they got the five and the six Ks out there, but I'm not trying to spend all that extra Talk money. Talk about a first world want and need. Now, would you actually run it at that, or would you be scaling the UI? Oh. You kind of have to, wouldn't you? I'm so glad Joe's here. Um, I mean, I'm running it on a Mac, so you... That sounded so sincere. 
I know, no, really, because <laughs> I, you're, you and me are the one that end up having words about this kinds of stuff, and I love it. Cool. Um, but I'm, I'd, I'd be running it on a Mac, and Mac looks very trash at like 1080p, 100% scaling. It's bad. It's bad. So having something. No, I'm actually uh, surprised to hear that because I always heard like the the Mac hardware that it is one of the reasons everybody goes to it because of how good the screen is. Oh yeah, it's it's the font rendering at that scale that is just trash. It's fantastic that, at 4K, but hmm. at 1080p 100% scale. Now, I mean, like Mac everything is. Or is that forcing Linux? On? Oh no, no, this is on Mac OS. Oh, I, okay. I suppose Linux would look okay. It would look like it does anywhere else. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, just Mac was at least over the past few years has never been intended to be run on a 1080p screen. Well, just, I'm not going to argue with you on this one because I really don't know as much about it as you yeah. do when it comes to the Mac hardware. Other than to say, you know, fuck Mac. Mac That's Mac. the one I was waiting for. That. That's what I was waiting for. Well. I bought this thing. I want to. Uh, they were talking on uh, what was it? Linux Unplugged about this uh, little gaming console. And there's a bunch of these out there, but they were talking about this one. I'm going to share a picture of it real quick. Um, Is this the Windows one? The one? No, it it runs on Ubuntu 1910 or or a a derivative of Ubuntu 1910. Which is fine because it doesn't really go online. It's basically just an emulator box, but it's it's kind of a um, it's kind of a uh, Game Boy form factor kind of thing. Let me share it here in the video. Uh, this thing right here. Pie and boy, pie girl. Oh yeah, dude! I almost bought one of these. Yes, fantastic. Is it? Yes. The one? yeah, I, I I ordered one. It came yesterday. I think my daughter's upstairs you playing nerd. it right now. Oh, super nerd. But this thing's got like 2,000 games on it or something like that. Uh, it's No, because it looks a lot like all the ones that... Uh, I, I, I know this form factor, and I know um, the... I think the company that's releasing them, I'm, I didn't think that they were running a um, Linux backend, but I guess I kind of have to be on most of their stuff. And they mm-hmm. release a lot of different handhelds. But they look really similar to all the ones that you can build yourself with like a Raspberry Pi Zero or something to that effect. Not not at this cost. I have tried. Not at this cost well, and this that would quality. Be- not at 90 bucks. You're right. Well, with the Zero, I mean, if you're paying $15 for the Zero and you have a 3D printer... Yeah, this has got two SD like card slots, and and you still need to make the. I think you could do it for about that cost. Yeah, maybe you this, gotta have the you gotta have the good three D. But it's printer. not gonna not, look as good. Yeah, the whole thing doing it right. yourself like that, it's not gonna look. This the screen on this thing is fantastic too. I gotta tell you, mm. um, and it's got the trigger buttons on the back, and the build quality is good. It's got two SD card slots. Uh, one of them's got the OS on it, and the other one is the uh, Wait, presumably right where the games, the ROMs USB-C? are. Yeah, it's got two USB Cs on the bottom. Two? What's what's that for? One for charging? Well, one. And one for, I like, don't. I think one's for charging, and the other one is to hook it up to a monitor. I haven't done uh, it yet. That would be that would be my guess. Well, huh. but the the, the video that, quality is fantastic. Of course, you know you're playing games that are that were made for. I think the newest console that it comes out of the box with is the. So, uh, is it a is it a skin of like RetroArch? I've never seen it before. It it has a. I wouldn't call the interface similar, um, but it's it's just as simple to operate. Um, but it comes with uh, it comes with all the Neo Geos and the Nintendos up to the Nintendo sixty four, the PlayStation one, the PlayStation Portable, the PSP, and then all of the games. My God, the games! It's it's Have staggering you... the number of games that are on okay. it. Yeah. It's awesome that it runs Neo Geo, and that's usually my cutoff on the benchmark. But um, you, I do have further questions after that, and that would be how is the Nintendo sixty four emulation because. Even like top end computers mess that up. Yeah, it. I started um, Zelda. Which one is it? Um, Ocarina. I think that's it. I started playing that, and it looked. It didn't look any worse than I remember it. Um, Load up 007. Let me know how it runs. 007. Okay. <laughs> so one thing many I times didn't. I've been excited to play 007, and then it just stutters. 
through the whole start. And you try to aim and nothing happens, nothing happens. The next thing you know, you're looking through your left ear. And that's on the 64? <laughs> on the 64 emulation okay. on most devices. Now, one thing I did notice was on the PSP, I, pl I loaded up uh, Vice City Stories. Mm -hmm. And the uh, storytelling is a little choppy. There's some drop frames and some and some jerkiness to it. But then the gameplay is perfectly smooth. Uh, I don't so know, man. On, on for for PSP emulation, about the only thing I'm gonna go for is what God of War and um, Hydro Thunder. But then that, then again, you're emulating on the P or the PSP for the PS1 if you're playing Hydro Thunder. Yeah, it's got PS1 on it. I haven't played any of those games yet. I have not had a lot of time with it, other than I loaded up uh, Link Zelda: Link to the Past, and that plays just as good on there as it does anywhere else. I play that on SNES 9X a lot. I probably played it on that more than I ever did on the See, console itself. Now you have to nerd hard and uh, work on your speed run for Super Mario on the NES. Ah, uh, yeah. I haven't loaded up Super Mario yet. I, I got to get on that one. Um, it just, you could probably play a get different game every five minutes. And it would take you a week <laughs> yeah. to get through it. I mean, it's staggering. And it's got all the Sega uh, consoles. Um, oh, dude. And, and you said you said you had Neo Geo running. So then you got you got to make the Metal Slug run. What was that? Was that the arcade games? That, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't so remember. Importantly. More importantly, do Amiga games run? Well, yes. Ooh. Yeah, you, you could run Amiga games on a toaster. <laughs> yeah, but an IoT internet connected toaster, okay? Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's what I got. So, yeah, and then, and then I bought that stupid, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, that Elgato Stream Deck. I'm regretting hey, that. Hey, you send it to me, is what you do with it. You don't have enough hot You pay keys. 75% of the price and he'll do it. That's right. That's exactly right. I'll pay for shipping. You just put it in a box. Hundred bucks and it's yours. How much are they? <laughs> what, 150? 100, yeah. Mm. They're it's still it's, a good deal though. I don't know. It's well, just I mean, hotkeys. If, if you want yeah, if you want a bunch of programmable buttons. Yeah. Uh, are, are these the ones that have the screen though? They have the yes. screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I'm I'm basically buying a bunch of little monitors. Yeah. That's which I mean, I'm very vulnerable right now, Bill. I was telling you about my backlight. On each one of those little screens. Well, yeah, right. At the same time. That's about the same resolution as uh back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give or take. Mario yeah. is in such high quality. Wow. Yeah, that is the cool thing, is that you can you can get just whatever little JPEG you want and use that as a background for the buttons. The uh, it's a little infuriating on on Linux, such as most things are. And <laughs> what Eric Lin Linux has problems? Eric, oh my what? god! Newsflash! <laughs> Newsflash! Well, there was one project out there for the you know the GUI to program it, and then it got abandoned, and then another one picked it up, and, and so now the, there's these two separate projects out there, and you got to know which one to actually go with. You got to go to GitHub and look and see which one's got the latest commit. And then sometimes you can't just leave this thing plugged in and then restart the machine and expect it to run because the software needs to be running before the device is plugged in. And it's got it. You got to have the UDEV rules uh, written manually. So there's a bit of faff to be had with all that. Bit of faff. Yeah. Everybody likes a bit of faff, right? Not, not a thing. I mean, I'm not quite where Eric is yet. With with the uh, with the frustration with Linux, probably just because you know these podcasts <laughs> can't just give it up full stop. But yeah, uh, you can. No, you just need to buy a Zoom Pod Track. That's what you need to buy, and then you don't have to worry about what operating system you're running to record a show. You just press the record button, and that's all it does. Because that's all it does. What but is then? It I, is it recording yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's so uh, so. This thing is actually really cool, man. So, so it's just I've a got, digital recorder. Yeah, yeah. So I've got I've got a microphone. See, now you have to have the right microphone. These Samsons are fantastic for this because they have both an XLR, which is dumb, right? It does not do any kind of electronic anything. That goes directly into the Zoom Pod track, and then it's got USB, and that goes into the computer. And so I can talk to you guys through the computer. 
and I'm recording the same exact audio stream separately on the Zoom pod track over XLR. So I've got I've got dual dual things going on here, and it's fantastic this way. Yeah, you're you're definitely right to get things out of the software layer and get them into hardware. There, if I were doing more audio or if I cared more about it, I would absolutely be getting more external hardware that was dedicated to it. Yeah, you know, you there's no surprise of every time I you know reboot my computer, what's going to work, what isn't, you know, and even if yeah. I don't reboot, like sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even on so, Windows, updates will mess stuff up. Even on Mac, oh, updates yeah. will mess stuff no, up. No, I'm so not even saying be... it's just Linux. No, it's yeah. it's just, Windows is just as bad. Bluetooth and, you know, microphone connections and, you know, USB audio interfaces, all of this stuff on any operating system I've used has been problematic. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm. That's interesting because cause you kind of made a good case for it because uh, I argued against it when Dave bought... It's not, I, I suppose it's the same sort of device. He's got a mixer board that he plugs his microphone into, and it's got capabilities of just recording right onto yeah, an SD yeah. card or something. Same idea. Right there. Yeah, that, this goes onto an SD card. Yeah, same idea. And I argued, okay, so now you've got to get that file off that SD card and onto the computer, uh, which in his case probably is one more layer of complication that he could do without. But I mean, in your case, how does that work? Getting that you, file from that separate USB, you plug it into the into the machine, and then it just shows up as a file system. So it's already mounted as a file system. Not you don't currently. Have... I try to undo as much as I possibly can to get the you know. Okay. Like just in case there's like USB wine, coil wine, whatever in there, I unplug everything I can just to get the 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 best signal possible. But yeah, just a quick USB to the to the machine, and it shows up, and you drag and drop. I mean, yeah, that. Makes a lot of sense. Do away with the software layer, and then you've got less. Uh, you've got less places for things to go wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So huh, that's something to think about. Yeah, and on user space, I use a, a phone to capture the video instead of using the the webcam, uh, which I I record the webcam separately just to have a backup. But um, yeah, I mean the the quality is better by a lot. Huh. I've never actually used I, I I know that Droid Cam is out there and things like that, or you could use screen copy through yeah. um and then that what's that one for the Apple called the you what's that one called? You got me. Oh it it just came out. I, uh OMG Ubuntu was talking about it a couple of weeks ago. The the sort of uh Oh the screen share dr- thing? Yeah. Oh you, play. Huh. UX play. UX play, that's it. Yeah. Ah. You can just turn oh, your no, camera on. The drugs on are wearing off. Re up, re up. <laughs> you need a minute to go in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've yeah. got. I mean, you know, even compared to something like this, the Elgato Face Cam one, I still prefer using uh, separate hardware. It's just nicer to deal with. So, how much was that device that you're you're talking about there? What's it called the the Zoom Pod Track? Yeah, uh, I I found it at Best Buy on clearance for like one. 130 something like that what a brick and mortar store oh yeah you have oh, to dude. go to oh man it is just so much easier i don't have to wait on shipping and i'll i'll like i'll still order it online and then i'll just go pick it up that day whoa, whoa wait wait so you walk in the building yeah and they've got the thing you want sitting on a shelf but don't forget the magic doors you walk up to the doors and they go Pwah, you know so i mean already as if they better. really want you there uh-huh huh it's inviting and then after you're done, you can go get pizza. No, nah, this sounds like a trap. It is a trap. And yeah. that's how I end up buying a bunch of Magic the Gathering cards as well. I'm like, wait a minute. I wasn't supposed to spend an extra $100 today. I had to give up on Magic. Yeah, yeah, me too. I like, I, I just, I buy them now for the art and stuff. I just like having oh. them around. Oh, oh, they oh, throw. it's Magic. They throw <laughs> so many different like sets. I mean, they oh, yeah. out sets like every couple of weeks. Oh, this is where this is where uh, Skyrim got the idea to charge you two dollars and fifty cents for armor on a horse, man. Like right. cards are the original DLC. All these, <laughs> uh, uh, what do you call them? Transactions. Yeah, it is quite literally microtransactions. Back in my day, they were only a dollar ninety nine, you know, and now they're five bucks. So you know, it's a uh, Oh, it's painful. It's so much work. And they came out with like so many different collaborations. It used to be, you know, they'd come yeah. out with like one collaboration a year and it'd be in their unglued set. 
Yeah. And, and and now it's like Doctor Who, freaking whatever other TV show you can c- come up with, Magic has a collaboration with them and there's yeah. cards. Yeah. Oh, but everybody figured out that you can you can make a ton of money off of this, right? Cuz right. cuz nerds like me will be like, "Oh, I like that show." And then just buy an entire box yeah. of it. Like It's people. amazing how little of this conversation I have followed from the time you started talking about that game device on Amazon till right now i literally didn't know any of the games you mentioned i have never ever seen magic the gathering i mean i know what the cards are but i've never like sat there and yeah. it, it's it, our life experiences have been very different yeah. <laughs> I, I've, actually, I've actually done tournaments I, yeah. I, I used to host a weekly game um i used to buy like literal the full unopened boxes of magic cards and then the prices started shooting up and then they started coming out with sets every couple of weeks and I, I just, and also when I move, nobody here plays, so I can't even do classic stuff. Yeah. And just say, mm. nothing made after 2015 gets played in this house. Yeah, exactly. So you kind of, you kind of, they're worthless at that point. They're just there to look at. Uh, if you, if you actually want to play, a, yeah, yeah, exactly. But so Eric, Eric you remember when there. we were in, in middle school and the, that back then the thing was pogs? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. You know, the mm-hmm. the whole thing changes. The, the it was probably Marvel Joe stuff. and and uh, yeah you know and what? Leo pickup sticks. You know what? They've... I played a shit ton of D and D too. So <laughs> no just, yard you, darts. You can just forget that. Crap. I live Joe and Leo yeah. fit I firmly played, in I the elder millennial darts. category of nerddom. Look, yeah. I uh, played lawn darts. I played when I was in Germany. I played marbles. I played a crap ton of marbles. Um, let's see. Um, Middle school, we had a lot of pogs, and we did play. Um, high school, it was all about the hacky sack. So when I got to the military, I actually annoyed some of my um, Hispanic friends because I actually knew how to juggle a ball. <laughs> Thanks yeah. to the hacky sack. Yes, I'm The implication being what? Everywhere. Mexicans can't juggle? Uh, no, they can. Yeah, oh. may- maybe not a, Maybe not regular balls ball. in the hand. Yeah, there a, you go. That's what I'm talking about, a soccer ball. <laughs> oh. See, Leo knew what I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Where did Majid go? He went to go re up, I think. No, yeah, he, he's he like, I know nothing about this conversation. Yeah, yeah. He and Eric can take a nap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Together. I mean, I, I had a game, I, I had mean, a Sega console when I was young. The I, Genesis or the. Master System and then Genesis. So I had both of those, which already made me weird because everyone I knew had Nintendo. Yeah. So, um, but after that, I never had another console still to this day. What? Um, yeah, That's horrible. never. Wow, wow. And so you were I just, just playing I'd, Joe and Mac. Never. I've just beyond that age, and, and you know that point in my life, which was probably fourteen. I just never played video games. I never. I was outside. I was like, yeah. You know, I just. I was on a farm. I grew up. You know, working outside a lot. I, I chased my girls. friends and I. You know, yeah. I mean, I. I was always during, out doing. During that time of my life, I gave up on sleep. I gave up on sleep. <laughs> so I, I literally spent most of the day on my bike outside in most locations that I was at, depending on, well, except for Georgia. I didn't do that, that crap in Georgia. I, you don't go outside and, 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 and yeah. Anyways. <clears throat> well, what do you get fine shot? if you're white? But um, <laughs> no, not if you're, you know, half the size of everybody else. Oh, and, probably. And you little guy, the, the bug And the bugs will fly you away. Are you trying to say there's an obesity problem in Georgia? No, I'm trying to say that I was tiny until like um, late high school, until my yeah. junior year. Uh, I think I think school. he had the height. He didn't have the no, he didn't have the girth. No, uh, until uh, look until um, junior year of high school, the summer of junior year of high school, I was five foot two, ninety two pounds. Okay, if that tells you anything. So until I was sixteen, yeah, sixteen, I was five foot two, ninety two pounds, and that was from the time that I was like. 13 and before that i was even shorter so (laughs) i was small like tiny for most of my growing up years compared to all my classmates and then is that what your wife said as well um well no it's definitely not what your wife said (laughs) (laughs) good well it's a good thing that she's getting some action at least But um, no, like my junior year of high school, I, I grew so quick that um, I was actually diagnosed with Osgood Slaughters because my, my, my joints, bones were basically touching mm. because my bones were growing Ow. faster than my uh, tendons and my muscles. That sounds painful. And so, it, it, no, yes. And every time I'd go out and play, 
my my knees would swell up like basketballs. So Ooh. I did. I, I played a lot of Sega Genesis. Um, I, I my my dad got the NES um, when I was six. So it was like the year that it came out. He ended up getting one and bringing it home. Um, but um, so I did play a lot of Nintendo. I played a lot of um, and then like I lived with my grandpa for a while in, in Iowa and he had an Atari. So I played a crap ton of Atari in his mm. basement. There's an Atari uh, retro console that's come out. You know, like they did the Commodore 64 the minis, one, yeah. the one that looked like a Amiga 500. Now there's an Atari one. Yeah. But just Speaking about anything can, can emulate the Atari, so I can get all my uh, uh, retro centipede? goodness from that. Yeah, a little centipede, little Pac-Man. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's interestingly, I'm having Astros. my daughter bring this game down. That's the one thing it, this thing does not have. Here's <laughs> oh that thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really it cool. does not have Atari emulation. That You're but I at don't it. probably. I mean, if it can do PSP, but the the video quality on this thing is I don't know where my camera is. It's black. It's black. it does quality. look like a really nice device. I mean, like it's, it's well built, well and... made. I mean, you could as soon as it the... comes on, he moves it. I know, right? I mean, especially for for eighty five well, bucks. I mean, that's that's pretty good. So if you can see. Hey, Pac-Man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks like the view angle is good. Like it does, you know, it's not washed out or anything. That looks very washed out. Yeah, it's clean. Right now. Eric, do you have a different video feed than me? Because I can't see anything. Like, like I, I can see it. No, you don't got to move it, Bill. It, it oh. looks washed out because of the camera. But, right, but you can right. tell that it's good quality. Right. Yeah, I mean, it looks, for a small it's, screen, it, it would be viewable, you know. It's at least sure. 720p. But, I mean, even the trigger buttons in the back, which... I assume you need those for the the PlayStation and the PlayStation Portable. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Neo Geo, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, PlayStation, PSP, um, Capcom One, Capcom Two, Three, PC Engine, Family Computer, Super Famicom. Family Computer. Does yeah, it have do a clean battery life? Um, I've never actually heard it called Family Computer though. I don't know what I've never yeah. seen this. Some of this might be from overseas because there's. Hang on, sis. Yeah, they never called it the Famicom <laughs> here. It's like I want to play it. Uh, Nintendo. Yeah, Bill, get Super with the program. That's Donkey Kong. Come on. Well, yeah, it's putting up pictures next to Nintendo 64, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, Look, Sega Mega Nintendo Drive, Sega of, Genesis um, of Lion King, and Maker played a second. Level oh my over God! And over again. No. So how is it that an emulator software gets sued? into oblivion by nintendo and yet this thing's for sale on amazon oh because there's because still- there's they they put out an encryption key um and also no, that's their latest thing nintendo's always been crazy about this stuff man i just read yeah. something about the original game boy that um basically what had to happen is the hardware and the cartridge both had both had to agree on that, uh, you ever turn one on, right? You see the Nintendo mm-hmm. slowly come down. So the cartridge and the hardware both had to agree on where that was position wise on the screen. And if you wanted to create bootleg cartridges, you had to put Nintendo in your cartridge to make it agree. And that was copyright infringement. They didn't care about the game itself. It was the act of syncing that up that, that caused the illegality of it, and they could go after you for that. Nintendo has always been like this about yes. absolutely everything. The 64 right. emulators were going through this exact same thing back in the day. I think but you're saying that this thing is... comes with. You're saying this thing comes with 2,000 games. Oh, it doesn't. Does it come with yeah. those? Yeah, about 2,000. Um, okay, so how is that even remotely legal? It's not. It's a gray area. Yeah, it's legally gray. <laughs> right. It's dark gray. And, but yeah. they, they sell it anyway, and Nintendo doesn't go after them because um, they, they would prefer to go after the developers to prevent things from like that from being made. So hmm. the uh, Nintendo's sellers, been, the developers. A, been a big Golden asshole. GoldenEye 007, is that the one you wanted me to try? Yes. That one is so hard to emulate. It comes well, with see, these shall... games. It comes with the games. That's yes. What, that's what they were saying. Yeah. Let's see how choppy it sounds. That's insane. Huh. More okay. fantastic yeah, yeah, yeah. radio. Those are those are exactly the types of things that Nintendo would step all over you for. I don't. I just think this was more of a "don't ask for permission" kind of situation. Is it choppy? I can't hear. It hasn't no, that, started yet. That that little rareware swivel looking good, man. Yeah, it looked solid. 
sounds that's, choppy. That, that would be nor- where it normally started getting really, really choppy and ugly. Is it choppy and ugly? It kind of sounds like it. It's The sound is a little choppy. Yeah. But let's see how the gameplay is. It's going to play like garbage. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, just because they put it on there doesn't mean it'll work well. Okay. There's a guy right around the corner. He's going to kill you. Black screen. Black screen. Yeah, it sounds real choppy. Well, a couple of games are like that until you get to the actual gameplay, and then and then it... Oh, no, uh, not this one. <laughs> all right, let's see. Now, I mean, it's it's playable, but anyway, here, take it back up to the phone. Get out of here with it, mm-hmm. you filthy animal. I don't know. It's playable. I mean, it's every it's every game made up to, what, 2002 in one little thing the size of a calculator. That's like, I've, I mean... I- I've been enjoying getting emulation of various things working on the Steam Deck, but thankfully you can tweak all the settings in that a whole lot more than you can in something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just got so, my hands on a Steam Deck here recently. I haven't the, played it the, too much. For the price that you paid and the quality of that screen, that is actually... Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I ended up with the OLED one. Oh, are you talking about his? Uh, his. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked good from from what I could tell. Oh, and I'm well, sure for Moss. most of those classic games, it's probably perfectly fine, you know? Yeah. Moss is in the uh, mint cast room right now. Oh, us because he's asking. It's time to go. <laughs> uh, I, I, was, I, I was talking about an extreme outlier when it comes to 007. I mean, I have not found anything that does that properly. And that's including like a proper x86 device. I can't remember the name of that 64 emulator. X- x86. X86 64. The, oh, the Nintendo 64? Yeah, I can't remember the name of the emulator because I've never really gotten into that. I, I installed it once. Was messing around with it a little bit. It's By the time really, 64 came along, I was it, it, with the Nintendo 64 specifically. It's a very per game type of thing on whether or not it works correctly. And 007 is just one of those ones that's really, really hard to get working right. And I have not found the right settings yet on anything that will emulate that right. Yeah. Well, I guess we should call this one a day. <laughs> okay. <coughs> All right. Did we talk anything about Linux? Uh, yeah, so the whole well, conversation is about Linux. I mean, the Steam Deck runs Linux. Yeah. His little device that he's talking about runs Linux. Uh, look, this is, uh, I'm this just has asking. been a hardcore Linux conversation. <laughs> Except when we were talking about Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. I wanted to talk about Eric's experience on, on Arch, but I guess we'll get to that. Uh, oh, next my time. God. I do want to hear about this, actually. So yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, go stay on. tuned Jump for this one. Jump over to the one. freaking Midcast stuff, then. <laughs> we'll talk about it there. I mean, yeah, we that'll know work. Our topic. Well, that'll at least be my my uh, innards, or not my innards, my uh, Your bi-weekly wandering. Bi-weekly, yeah. yeah. Well, you All right, well, bi-weekly last night. We'll call it a yeah. day and go over there and talk. Then that way, Moss can be part of the conversation. I'm sure he's got All a lot right. to say about art. See you guys there. <laughs> All right. All right. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hit like and subscribe. Give us a shout. Let us know what you think. Show it. Uh, linuxotc.org and then until then we'll be back in two weeks i've been bill i've been eric i'm still joe he stole it from me he stole it i can't he's been majid uh yeah i'm in pain (laughs) you don't look like it (laughs) and i'm still leo (laughs) see you folks